Drug prosecutions in Montana have increased by 33% in recent years. It's because drug traffickers are using Montana's interstate like a drug superhighway to bring massive loads of meth into our state. Well, tonight we hear from a Billings woman who talks openly about the how meth took years away from her youth. Meth, it's known as the devil's drug. The demand is high, the supply readily available. Drug traffickers directly linked to Mexican cartels drive our interstate system like a drug superhighway, bringing meth to Montana and putting people's lives at risk. We talk recovery. People like Mandy Nunez. It's like the best adrenaline rush you've ever had. She spent many precious Initially, years of her life addicted it, to meth. By the time she was in her late teens, how she used it changed. And then you have to steal to support your habit, and, and it just progresses from there. She was in and out of jail and court. She was in and out of psychiatric care. I ended up sitting um, my county time out in jail, and two weeks before I was due to get out, my husband fell off the rooms and died. And uh, that was a defining moment in my addiction. When meth takes control in someone's life, local, state, and federal partners work to take control back. Project Safe Neighborhoods is a federal initiative to help fight Montana's drug-driven, violent crimes. In Yellowstone County, through Project Safe Neighborhoods, 124 people have been charged federally for meth crimes. 346 pounds of meth has been seized and 96 firearms have been taken off the streets. Kurt Almy is U.S. Attorney for the District of Montana. If a drug case comes across his desk, the penalties are stiff. If an individual is trafficking in more than 50 grams of meth, they're going to go away for a mandatory minimum of 10 years in prison. Lieutenant Brandon Woolley explains why people are drawn to meth. Some people end up getting into selling drugs because they just need to do it to support their habit or they find out that the money's easy and they'll tell you that the, you know, meth is the devil's drug and you know, it's taken everything from them and they wouldn't wish it on anybody else. But for Mandy, there came a point where she did wish for penalties. I, I knew there was nothing left um, in that life for me but prison sense or a casket. And uh, I just, I, I knew that I had to do something different. She summarizes the end of her addiction really as a moment. changing moment. It was the only time that I've ever been arrested when it was like a relief. It was like, I don't have to do this anymore. Like I knew jail wasn't going to be fun. It never is. Mandy spent nine months of her recovery here at the Yellowstone County Detention Facility. She detoxed, but said she finally had to choose to change. I, I didn't have anybody call. I didn't call anybody when I got to jail, like not my mom, not nobody. Um, and it really hit me that I had sacrificed every relationship I had ever had with another human being f for drugs. Her changing moment changed everything. I've gotten married to another person in recovery who's good and treats me well. I have a house, I pay rent, it's paid on time, it's usually early. She takes what she knows about recovery and puts it to use at Rimrock Foundation in Billings. Mandy works as a rehabilitation technician supervisor, helping others through the painful effects of addiction. When the pain and fear of change becomes less than the pain and fear of staying the same, people become ready. But until that happens, they do what they know, they do what they're used to. Um, I'm just lucky enough to have reached that moment. And Rimrock Foundation in Billings is Montana's largest addiction treatment center. However, that facility does face some limits in space, for example. It brings about another element in the fight against meth in Montana, treatment and having the resources for it.